Good morning everyone, it's great to be uh, together again in our communion service. Um, I was reflecting really on how lovely it's been to bring some of the service for, from the garden. What a, a great experience that's been, to be in the outdoors and able to minister. Um, and this morning it's particularly important to me because we're going to be thinking of the good and the bad living together. And, uh, and I want to show you, as Jesus did, um, that uh, picture. Uh, I want to use my freesia. I think it's a freesia. I don't know the difference between a dandelion and a, a, and a tulip, but I think it's a freesia. Uh, this, is, this is it. Um, can you see it? You can write into me if it's not a fuchsia. But there it is. It's a beautiful plant. But look, if you widen out the lens, you'll see that it lives quite happily with the nettles and, and the weeds. And we're going to have a look at a story that Jesus told us about the wheat and the tares and see if we have anything to learn from that story. Um, but before we do, let's begin with some prayer, shall we? So, Lord, we thank you for your creation all around us this morning. Would you gather us together um, in that one space, that one spiritual space, so that we can uh, worship you? Your presence, Lord, is everywhere. We don't need to ask for your presence, but we do need to tune into it. So would you help us, we pray. Amen.
from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13, beginning at verse 24. Jesus told them a story. The kingdom of heaven is like what happened when a farmer scattered good seed in a field. But while everyone was sleeping, an enemy came and scattered weeds in the field and then left. When the plants came up and began to ripen, the farmer's servant could see the weeds. The servants came and asked, Sir, didn't you scatter good seed in your field? Where did these weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. His servants then asked, Do you want us to go out and pull up the weeds? No, he answered. You might also pull up the wheat. Leave the weeds alone until the harvest time. Then I'll tell my workers to gather the weeds and tie them up and burn them. But I'll order them to store the wheat in my barn. May God add his understanding to this word. Amen. So I find these, um, these words of Jesus in this parable really challenging. I have a really good explanation and uh, I had a really good sermon ready. But then I read on and I read Jesus' own explanation to his parable. And it left me feeling really challenged. It really is in and out stuff. There's the wheat and there's the um, tares. There's the good people and there's the bad people. And I always find that really hard. I don't want to think of it like that, but that's what Jesus said. So we have to accept that. We have to take it and, and try and uh, understand it. But I want to go a bit deeper because this is why I find it challenging find it challenging because it's never as clear-cut as that in my own life. If I look at myself, then within myself there are wheat and there are tares. There's God's seed of God's kingdom, but there's also the other stuff. Or perhaps you're not like me. Perhaps everybody else watching this is perfectly righteous in every way. But even though my life is bowed to Christ and I've given him everything, I know that within me there are wheat and there are tears. So I find it really hard to look at other people 
and make a judgment. I'm really glad that it's God that does the judging. It's him that can see the wheat and the tears. You see, because actually the wheat and the tears are very similar. And you have to have a well-trained eye to be able to spot it. I'm glad we don't need to do the judging. But I really am glad that my life has tears in it. That's a strange thing to say. Has those things in it that are not of God. Because it's those things that he's leaving there to grow that cause me to fall again and again and again upon his grace, upon his love, upon his mercy, which he has surely given to us. And that gives me cause to be hopeful. That, like Jesus said, don't judge others. Take the speck out of your own eye first. And when I look at this parable, that's what it makes me do, judge others. But actually, this morning, I want us to think a little bit more deeply about that. And look at our own life. And see that it's not all that it should be. There is beautiful wheat and there are tears that masquerade as good in our lives. And it's good every now and then to examine ourselves, examine our motives. We're all relying on God's um, changing us from glory to glory, from one degree of glory to a new degree of glory. That's the good news, that's the gospel. But I really find it difficult to look at this parable and think that I'm all the wheat. We are what Christ makes us and if he turns us into wheat, that's wonderful. Hallelujah. But we rely on his love and we rely on his grace and we rely on his mercy. And that's there for everyone. Amen. Cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see His wounds, His hands, His feet, my Savior on the cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears They laid him down in Joseph's tomb The entrance here by heavy stone Messiah still and all
The blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints. My gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to illustrate part of our communion together with slides from Engage Worship this morning and words from Henri Nguyen's book, Life of the Beloved. He speaks of being taken, blessed, broken and given. He remembers that each day as a priest, he would come to his fellow priests and he would say these words as he broke bread. I take bread, bless it, break it and give it. And he felt that these words summarised the lives of believers who were called to become bread for the world. Bread that is taken, blessed, broken and given in every moment of life. So I welcome you to join me at the table of life, the Lord's table, to come and eat and drink, but also in the space that I leave to reflect on um, these precious words of life with all the sounds that are going on around us. Let's say these words together. Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. taken from all eternity long before you were born and became part of history you existed in God's heart long before your parents admired you or your friends acknowledged your gifts or your teachers and colleagues and employees and employers encouraged you you were already chosen the eyes of love had seen you as precious, as an infinite beauty and of eternal value. So we say together, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
blessed. Many people, and we too at times, feel like victims of a world we cannot change. We hear an inner voice calling us evil, bad, rotten, worthless, useless, doomed to sickness and death. Still I say, as a beloved son and daughter of God, you are blessed. So we say together, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Broken. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 and verse 10. We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is not from us. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus shall always be revealed in our body. Let's bring our confessions. Bring our wheat and our tears, your good and your bad before God. And be honest, because he loves you. Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he said this is my body broken for you and so we take our bread and we eat. The blood of Christ poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. It's only as people who are given that we can fully understand being taken, blessed and broken. In the giving, it becomes clear that we are chosen, blessed and broken. Not for our own sake, but so that all that we live finds its final significance in its being lived for others. Jesus, thank you for your body, taken, blessed, broken, and given for us. Thank you for taking, blessing, breaking, and giving your body for the sake of the world. We go from here in power for your glory. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.